Most individuals who have chronic hip pain are having hip pain that they feel in the front of their thigh or they're having pain in the groin. And it's usually worse with weight-bearing activities, so walking longer distances and standing for longer periods of time. And typically, once they get off of their feet, they have less pain. However, you know, the more weight-bearing activities that people do, the more pain they have, and so they avoid those activities. And eventually, over the course of time, they feel themselves walking less, standing less, doing less, and then they start to have a real substantial decrease in their quality of life. During a total hip replacement, uh, we approach the hip through the front of the hip, and so we go through a couple of the muscles uh, that are responsible for hip flexion and hip abduction, move those off to the sides with the retractor so that we can see and visualize the entire hip itself. The head and neck of the femur are removed, which really contain the majority of the arthritis, and then the acetabulum, or the cup of the hip joint, is prepared for the metal components that we put into place. Uh, once the cup is in place uh, with a plastic liner, then a stem is fashioned for the top of the femur, which replaces the head and neck that were removed. And then the final articulation or bearing surface is a ceramic head with the plastic liner that's inside of that cup that we had previously placed. The direct anterior approach is an approach to the hip that was actually developed back in the 1970s, and it was actually one of the first approaches used for total hip replacements. Uh, it went by the wayside uh, because of the posterior approach being so much more simple and easier uh, to perform. Um, but as time had progressed and some other complications with the posterior approach had emerged, then the anterior approach again came back into the forefront. And people have been using the direct anterior approach uh, for hip replacements for roughly speaking 15 years. And there are certainly a lot of benefits to using the direct anterior approach. Um, the peer-reviewed scientific literature has shown uh, that there is less pain and a quicker return uh, to normal function with using that approach as opposed to a posterior approach. And there's also a decreased rate of dislocations uh, of the hip replacement with a direct anterior approach as opposed to your posterior approach. Now it does come with some uh, downsides as well. There is a slightly increased risk of fracture during surgery, that's by 0.7%, and there's also a chance of having some painful numbness on the side of the hip, uh, which is not seen with the posterior approach. However, those pale in comparison to the benefits in my opinion. For a total hip replacement, as long as things go well during surgery, which I expect, uh, people are able to put their foot on the hip immediately after surgery, and once the spinal anesthesia is worn off from uh, the time of the operation, the nursing staff on the floor will have them sitting by the bedside, standing, and then subsequently walking that same day. Typically, people will stay in the hospital only one night, and then the next day, as long as things are going as planned in terms of their pain control and other medical issues, and the physical therapist has deemed that they're safe to be discharged to home, they'll go home the day after surgery. And most individuals are using an ambulatory aid of some type uh, for the first five to seven days. Most individuals use a walker, some, people's, uh, some people end up using crutches, um, but after that the physical therapist that they see afterwards will end up uh, discontinuing those and transitioning them either to a cane or to nothing at all. And most people are using some form of a pain a medication to help out for the first two weeks. And then after that they're using over-the-counter medications to help out with their pain. Uh, as people progress from the two-week mark to the six-week mark after surgery, they are beyond that break-even point, feeling like they're better than they were before surgery and feeling less pain, better function than they had before they entertained the operation. When they come back for their final follow-up uh, before their long-term follow-up, they are doing super well at 10 weeks. They're really happy they had the operation done, they're completely healed, and they're really more so asking questions about their recreational activities. When can they go golfing next? When can they go hiking next? When can they um, you know, go water skiing or snow skiing again? So that's fun to have those conversations at those time points.